Hello listeners, we are your co-hosts Janine Bailey and Marie Quigley for the Empower World Coaching and Leadership Podcast. Empower World brings guests who are making a difference to the world to inspire coaches and leaders who lead with mind, heart and soul. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. This is Marie Quigley with my amazing business partner, Janine Bailey. And this is Empower World, the coaching and leadership podcast. And we are very happy to be speaking with each other today, aren't we, Janine? Very. And it's my early morning here in Australia. And my late night in the UK. And we know that you're listening at different times in the day. So it's it's always five o'clock somewhere let's say that yes exactly five o'clock in the morning yeah <laughs> often <laughs> often the times we're meeting currently right yes, yes and because, very... we're, because we're on purpose because we're 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 recreating a lot of our work we're redesigning how and what we deliver we've got some lots of exciting new projects on for uh the empower world community for coaches who are joining our programs uh, from outside, all around the globe. It, it's just phenomenal how we've been able to reach people from Brazil to Australia to Belgium to the UK and all around. It, it's a wonderful journey that we've been on. Yes, and it's been amazing having participants from New Zealand who, uh, you know, sometimes for me the timing is <laughs> in the middle of the night, but New Zealand can perhaps <laughs> experience even more crazy hours. So it's wonderful to have people who, again, are, are dedicated and really wanting to make a difference in the world through the work that they do. And so we really are stepping into our name of Empower World as we've been introduced to this much more expansive way of working together online as a consequence of what's happened across the world with COVID. So yes, it's, it's, brought in some hardships and some difficulty and challenges and loss as well. And we know that it's opened up worlds for many, many people, including, including ourselves. And that for that, we're grateful. And we're grateful for the, hopefully, the positive impact on the world itself in terms of the, the environment and the, the biodiversity and, um, you know, all things living. It's giving our world a, a bit of a chance to breathe, I, I believe. Absolutely. And we have just completed our module on setting up a successful practice, creating uh, fantastic clients for your business. So it was the final module of this month's session tonight. And we were just talking about it, Janine, and we thought about what would be useful as a consequence of what people have gone through over the whole module in developing their practice what are some of the lessons learned the main lessons learned that came out of that module so that's what we're going to talk about tonight uh, mm -hmm. some of the lessons that came out of reflecting questioning getting curious about how to make a successful coaching practice yeah and this this module is part of our advanced coach training skills um, program, which we call the Diamonds. Mm. And, it, and, and this is really a deep dive. I think people are, perhaps the participants aren't expecting such a deep dive into understanding, you know, what is it that they truly want? What do they really truly want to create for themselves in this practice? Who are they going to work with? What's the ripple effect? Um, what's what's their purpose? Even though we look at purpose work uh, in our, our foundation um, coach training, and also we have a module around you know very much about purpose. But again, we're we're bringing that in the purpose, the values, and again, who's their ideal client, and who importantly, who are they being as a coach? What are they bringing into the world? because we know that that matters, who we're being and how we come into that space or maybe not even in that space, who we're being from second to second, moment to moment, minute to minute. And of course we can be all sorts of things in a day, but who are we generally mostly choosing to be? What are the beliefs? What is, what is the presence, the energy that we want to exude um, 
and, and again, with all of that purpose and what it is that we want to create in mind, you know, what are we, what are we really here for? If we, and if we ask ourselves, if we ask our clients, what are we really here for? What is our purpose? What are we meant to be doing in this world? It can just change, change lives, it, change our own life, which then supports others to change theirs. Absolutely. Some great questions to reflect on on purpose. And even before that, that, that question of purpose comes our state, our energy, how we're turning up to our work. So one of the things that we looked at in tonight's section of the module was who we are being in this work. So when we're enrolling clients, when we're calling our clients forth to do and live great lives, to be themselves, who are we being in our work? And uh, I shared a story about uh, recommending a, a client that I, I couldn't take because of my, my um, list was full. So I recommended them to go and work with another coach. And they came back to me and said, you know, the energy of the coach just didn't fit. It was, it was low, it was nervous. It, it didn't feel like the coach could hold the container for me to do the work. And I think that's such an important feedback from clients. They notice when our energy is not what a match for them. They notice when as coaches, we are not professionals in our work, when we are not holding a courageous space to hold ourselves in trust and courage so that they can hold themselves in trust and courage yes it's it's such an important story marie to share if we're not exuding that that uh, way of being it has there's an energy transference which people obviously pick up we we are communicating not just through our words but through our physiology through our energy through who we're being and you know we communicate through our hearts as well so um, according to heart math. So, so if we are, if we are not being who we want to be, if we're being, if we're holding beliefs that I'm not good enough, um, I don't deserve this. I'm not valuable enough. Um, or I'm scared to ask for the business. Um, I'm going to put them off. If we're, if we're holding any of those kind of beliefs, then what's going to happen? <laughs> Most likely, the business is not going to, you're not going to be able to call forth the clients that you want to work with. Now, there's also, uh, you know, when we're new coaches, potentially, yes, those, those fears and beliefs are going to pop up perhaps a little bit more easily than for more experienced coaches. So it is being aware as perhaps a new coach, what is it that I can do? What can I step into? What is the state that I can step into that will support me. You know, what is the, again, based on my, my purpose, why I'm here, if I can step into that state knowing that I'm meant to be doing this work, that I am valuable, that I do bring so much, so much um, amazing qualities and abilities to be able to su support people to step into their best life. It's going to create a different outcome potentially. So it's really doing the work to be able to step into the state that we know that we want to be in, um, especially when it is as we want it to be, to work with the people that we want to. Right. And it's reframing those beliefs or asking the saboteurs to leave the room to allow us to step into our best self, the, the wisest part of ourselves. And, and, and we talk about this in one of our other diamond modules, the parts work. You know, there are parts of us that are scared and parts are parts of us that don't want to ask for the, the, the fee that we want to charge. Those are the scared parts of us. And they're, they're, they came for a purpose. We, we talk about this in other modules. But the wisest part of ourselves knows that in order to ex exchange energy of what we call an investment for our time, there needs to be a trust in self. There needs to be 
a belief that your work is going to impact someone else. If there isn't that belief, then potentially you're not going to be brave in your questioning. You're not going to um, challenge the client when they're doing the same old storytelling. You are not going to be silent and let the client stay in silence. So all of the courageous coaching that needs to happen for the client to create new awareness, that's not going to happen if you think, I'm not good enough, I don't have a, a, a enough experience, I better not charge that, they might push back on me. So all of those, I mean, even watch my body language as I, I'm saying that for those who are watching and not listening. I'm getting mm. smaller and smaller with every uh, comment that I'm telling myself that I'm not good enough. But if I stand in my self-trust, then the client can see that and feels automatically safer and they want to work with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, beautifully shared, Marie. And it, again, you're talking about that, that, that energy transference when we're talking to ourselves in a certain way. So if, if we practice that um, belief and, and that self-talk of I, you know, I am worthy, I am good enough, I am meant to be here to make the change that I believe that I was born to do, born to create. If we remind ourselves and step into that energy as much as, as, much as possible, you know, we're going to give ourselves a great chance to be able to create the, the practice that we want and to be able to support others to, to live their best lives. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's recognizing you bring a gift into the world and to hold that back is preventing others from experiencing that gift and then for them to be able to pass on their gifts and so forth and so forth. So there's, there's some things that we teach in our foundation program about the, the, the principles behind what coaching is and how we can be successful if we step into these principles. And a lot of that is, you know, trust, having trust in ourselves, trusting, you know, really growing and developing that trust in ourselves. And yes, we're, we're human. So we're going to have those thoughts and beliefs that sabotage that. So it's normal, but it's also recognizing when you hear it, ah, I can reframe that, I can change my self-talk I can practice different things that, that shows that I, I trust in myself and I also trust that whatever I choose to focus on is going to come back. Whatever, whatever I choose to focus on most will come back. It's trust in whatever I choose to put my energy and attention to will come back. So, yes, it's one thing to say, yes, I want an amazing practice, but it's also another thing to step into and doing and taking action with the trust that it will come back. And trusting that, again, the this is going to sound very ooby dooby. <laughs> um, you can do ooby dooby. Ooby dooby, woo woo. And, and trust that the universe will bring back what it is I'm putting out there. And there's a science behind that, behind the ooby doobiness, the, the retic reticular activator system, the part of the brain, the RAS, which is like the Google search engine of our mind, you know, whatever we put into it, whatever we put most into it, because we're a mixture of light and dark, but whatever we choose to put most into that, that RAS, which is listening to our self-talk all the time, it's listening to what we're choosing to focus on. It's listening to the habits that we, we do day to day. So the more that we program that reticular activator system with what, what is wanted through self-talk, through practice, through mindfulness, it's going to, our mind is going to look out for those opportunities to bring that to life. I hope that makes sense. It makes mm -hmm. sense. It makes sense to me anyway. <laughs> and I think it's important to look when you come out of coach training school or when you're starting to build your practice, you are new at this, but you haven't been born today. You've got so many talents and skills. It's a remembering that you bring all of that with you in your coaching practice. And it's also that your steps ahead of your client, your client doesn't know how this process works. So you're already more of an expert in the coaching process 
than the client is. Of course, the client's the expert of their life. But if you can name yourself and choose to be the expert where you are right now, because <laughs> the pursuit of, of mastery is never ending. We might be MCCs, but we know there's still a long way of growth to go in our work. So it's wherever you are, be masterful in that stage with what you have and what you know. Trust in that. And that gives the confidence to the client to work with you because they feel that. They feel safe with you because you've got the safety within yourself. Yeah. And there's that beautiful word trust that comes up again. Um, so, again, trusting, you know, that, that you are, as Marie shared, the expert in what you do in that moment, trusting that whatever unfolds is perfect. So it may not end up with, with the client, potential client saying, yes, I want to work with you. And there is, again, is beautiful learning in that. There is beautiful practice building your muscles to be able to continue to explore new client opportunities. So again, it's, it's trusting that whatever shows up is perfect. It's giving, us, it's giving us clues, it's giving us signals as to what we can do better if we're curious and you know, explore. Okay, what, what can I do in a different way? What to, who do I need to be most importantly when I'm in those kind of experiences of not only looking for new work, but also when I'm working with clients, who do I need to be? What are the characteristics that I want to step into and show up in as knowing that potentially those characteristics, you have stepped into those in other areas of your life. So it's bringing in and modeling that in your coaching. And maybe it's even braver to say, to recognize that sometimes you're not a good fit with your client for you mm -hmm. to say, actually, I'm not the coach for you. Yeah. So that is a brave thing to do, to go into your practice, building practice, and say, do I want to work with this client? And if I don't, it's about naming it and supporting the client to find the right coach for them. That's kind of really empowering to be able to do that. It is, isn't it, Marie? It's very powerful when you recognise, and again, that, that talk, that, uh, you know, I'm taking control of my destiny. And maybe that client who actually hasn't chosen to work with me is exactly what is needed for me. Exactly. I'm meant to be working with someone else. And this is supporting me to, again, build my strength, my muscle. And also, as, as you shared, Marie, to, to be able to say no to someone that doesn't feel, you know, again, trusting your intuition, trusting your heart, trusting your wisdom, yeah, this, I'm, I'm meant to make space for someone else that I'm meant to work with. Yeah. So again, it's constantly reframing things to make it work, to make it, to build up your your strength, self belief, self trust. Mm. Lovely. I think we can leave it there, Janine. I think. I think we, we can. <laughs> I, I hope we've created in you, listeners, some food for thought for how you're being, who you are being in this work how you're turning up, what your energy is like, and the impact that has on the client and whether you or they want to work with each other. And if you don't, it's okay. In fact, it's so empowering to know who your client, ideal client is and be able to pass the ones that aren't meant to be for you to someone else that they're meant to be with. Yeah. And I, I am absolutely trusting we're, we're, we're cooked here. <laughs> and... So coaches, you know, have a think about who do you want to be? How do you want to show up in your sessions? Whether it be the sessions to bring forth your, the clients that you work with and the sessions that when you're working with your client, who do you choose to be? What is it that, what is the energy, the state that you want to step into to again, create amazing outcomes for your clients to support them to have amazing outcomes so so thank you for listening in and we look forward to seeing you on the next podcast thanks for listening you can find out more about us on our website www.empower-world.com and on our social media networks facebook linkedin 
Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Be empowered.